Chevy Volt, a thing of beauty, a thing of engineering. I believe it was Motor Trends Car of the Year if I did my research properly. I didn't go to Wikipedia, so I got a pretty good chance of having done it properly. We're going to test drive it. And we're going to test drive it in a way that is uniquely California. In order to do that, of course, we're going to have to do a couple of things. Number one is, the next time you see me, I'll be inside the car and not wearing a hat. Alright, first and foremost, the reason why we can't wear the hat here, even though it is a dynamite chapeau, yeah, we don't exactly have the headroom needed in order to be J.R. Ewing in this car, uh, which should be your first lesson in what this car really is. This is not a car for oil barons, obviously. This is a car that emphasizes fuel economy and efficiency, but is it fun? All right, so what we're going to do is try to drive this to Mulholland, actually through Mulholland, and try and do it in a fun, possibly, hopefully, interesting way. All right, first step, getting there. And getting there is half the battle. The main reason I'm choosing Mulholland Drive over anywhere else in Los Angeles is that Mulholland Drive is fun, all right? We do not have a uh, racetrack right here in the heart of the city where we can just go and spin the sucker around and see what it can do. Instead, we gotta find our own road with twists and turns and curves and apexes and all of those other road terms that Jeremy Clarkson knows and I don't. So what we're gonna do is put this car to the ultimate test on the ultimate road here in Los Angeles. All right, we're about to enter onto Mulholland Drive. Before I actually begin the road test, there's a couple of things that I want to do. So I'm going to very, very quickly pull off to the side. All right, this car has a couple of different driver settings. For the last day, I've been driving it in normal mode. I have yet to actually change it to another setting, but I'm about to do so right now. We are now engaged in sport mode. I'm now going to shift her into low wait for the other cars to pass us, and we're off. Hello. All right, well, a couple of things worth noting right now. Number one, I can actually hear the engine. This is something I've not been able to do in normal mode before. All right, number two, the handling is certainly a little bit sharper. Oddly enough, the way my cameras are positioned, this is, looks like it's going to be more of a promotional tour of that Hyundai in front of me than anything else. Unless, of course, the Hyundai in front of me gets out of my way. Man's doing 15 and... Oh, oh, 20. He's doing 20 and a 30. I should probably give you some interesting fun facts about Mulholland Drive. This is the road with the most fatalities in Los Angeles. That's not actually true, uh, but if you drive this road enough, you actually believe that because this is not what we would call a safe road. It was not designed with driving safety in mind. It was designed... I don't think it was designed. I think they just laid some asphalt down. Now, folks, I don't ever advise breaking the law. The law is sacrosanct here in beautiful, sunny Southern California, particularly all vehicular codes and mandates. But if you have a jackass in front of you who absolutely refuses to do the speed limit on Mulholland Drive, you may have to take matters into your own hands across the WL line and pass the bastard. That's all I'm saying. All right, that is all that I'm... Whoa, we did 31 for a second there. Yo, we've rounded a corner and he's put on his brakes. We're doing 15 again. I've driven on California roads for over 20 years. When you get to that point in driving, you're not looking for quality vehicle. You're not looking for fuel economy. You're looking to not be annoyed by other people on the road. And there's really no way of doing that. I mean, this car that's right in front of me is a prime example. We are doing nine miles an hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. And we're not doing that because 
he's a good driver. We're not doing that because he enjoys his driving experience. We're doing that because he's a jackass. Now, if I was in a fun car, I'd be okay with that. I'd just allow him to cruise while I cruised. Instead, what I'm doing is getting more and more agitated by this fool, and this is why road rage happens. It isn't because of a jackass driver. It's because you're in a car that doesn't make you happy. It's as simple as that. We're approaching an intersection. What are the odds this guy's gonna turn? Come on, turn. Oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes! He is turning! He is turning! He is turning! And we gone! Now the road test really begins, ladies and gentlemen. Now we can actually do the, what this car is supposed to do. At the very least, do the speed limit. All right, I'm gonna take the corners probably a little less safe than I would in my own car, because it's a rental, you know, and it's a rental I'm not paying for, and it's insured, so, you know, let's see what this car can do. It does have traction control, and I can't seem to find any place to turn the traction control off. All right, it's possible that sport mode loosens things up a bit, but I don't exactly feel like uh, Bo or Luke Duke. To be honest with you, I'm starting to feel more and more like Uncle Jesse with each passing day, and that's not a pleasant reality. So what does this car feel like now that we're sort of putting the pedal to the metal? I mean, obviously we can't do 180 on here. I'm not a stunt driver. I'm just a Los Angeles driver though I could understand why you might confuse the two. You drive a road like this in a car like this, you're of mixed emotions. This is a road where you expect to see James Dean drive off the side of it at any moment. This is not a road where you expect to see fuel economy being practiced. This is a road you expect to see an Audi cut you off for no reason. A lot of people just think of Los Angeles as this magical place, and I won't deny that there isn't magic here. But there's times that you have to temper reality with the magic. There's times that you have to realize that a place like Mulholland Drive can only exist in Los Angeles, and that's not because it's a magical world of elves and unicorns. It's because we are batshit crazy. I should be able to hear a vroom sound. I should be able to hear a growl. I should be able to hear, at the very least, a purr. You get no vroom. You get no growl. And you get no purr. What you get is consistency. There's nothing wrong with consistency. You are pretty much promised a consistent ride in this car. Right? This car is going to give you the same ride on day one as it will a year from now, two years from now, ten years from now. I can almost guarantee that. That's what the Volt is all about. It's about a quality ride. It's about an efficient ride. I don't know that it's about a fun ride. That said, can you have fun in this car? Absolutely you can have fun in this car. Go on to Mulholland Canyon sometime. Drive this road. All right, drive it in a Bentley. Drive it in a VW. And just as some background, the first car I ever drove on Mulholland Canyon was a 1996 GeoTracker. First car I ever bought and paid for myself. All right, thing about a GeoTracker is that was a rebranded Suzuki Samurai. The thing about a Suzuki Samurai is that it killed people. All right, there's no argument about it. I realize Suzuki's gonna send me a partially written cease and desist letter for saying that, but the car rolled over on a dime. The car rolled over on a nickel. The car just rolled over, all right, in a light breeze. That car was upside down 10 different directions. I have friends who've rolled Suzuki Samurais. I have friends who rolled my own 1996 Geo Tracker. And all I can tell you is this, this car feels a lot better than a Geo Tracker. That's probably not something Chevy's going to put on their advertising brochures. The Volt drives better than a Geo Tracker. The Volt less likely to roll than a Geo Tracker. How awesome would advertising be if it did though? So Los Angeles is a car city, right? Detroit might be Motor City, but we are the city that uses the cars. We aren't the city that makes the cars. And again, Detroit isn't the city that makes the cars anymore either, is it? I think I greatly prefer this car in sport mode than normal mode. It feels more like a car should feel. Right? It feels more like it's going to grip the road. It feels more like it's responsive to what you're doing as the driver. When you have it in normal mode, it feels like you're driving on eggshells. Like at any given moment, the little plumb bob on the screen 
is going to burst. One of the few moments when Mulholland is two lanes and I'm about to get passed by a blonde in a Mercedes. Look at her go. For the record, she is, of course, obeying the speed limit. Where we are at is Beverly Glen and Mulholland. We're nearing the end of our little trip here, our little sojourn, our little test, our little road test, our little point of interest, our little point of fun. We had fun. I had fun. All of my split personalities had fun. We all had fun. I want to thank Chevy for uh, giving me this opportunity. I want to thank the folks at clout.com uh, for awarding me this perk. And uh, I want to thank whoever it was who created this road.